So welcome everybody to the February community pod for the School of Facilitation. I'm your host, Phil, Phil Walsh, and we're going to start with a brief poem and then a moment's silence for grounding. Uh, the poem is also following the January theme from Donna Ashworth, and it's called Joy Chose You. Joy does not arrive with a fanfare, on a red carpet strewn with the flowers of a perfect life. Joy sneaks in as you pour a cup of coffee, watching the sun hit your favourite tree just right. And you usher Joy away because you're not ready for it. Your house is not as it must be for such a distinguished guest. But Joy cares nothing for your messy home or your bank balance, or your waistline, you see. Joy is supposed to slither through the cracks of your imperfect life. That's how joy works. You cannot invite her. You can only be ready when she appears and hug her with meaning. Because in this very moment, joy chose you. So welcome, welcome, welcome again, everybody. It's so nice to see you all here. Um, very traditionally, we do a quick shout out. Uh, can we have a wave from any first time podders? First time from Nikki, first time from Grace, first time from Suki and Kane and Sarah and Angela. And Susan. this isn't the pod. I'm a, I'm a guest host. It's normally Kirsty. I've just dropped in just to do one. Oh, you've got to come back and meet Kirsty. she's ace. Um, but um, I am guest hosting the School of Facilitation pod uh, this week, um, and it's a delight to, to see you all here. Um, the theme of this week is community. So we're kind of, I, I really like getting a little meta with it, right? It's like we're gathering as a community to talk about why it's important to gather as a community. Um, so we're we're gonna uh, just really understand why we're committing this time why so many of us like nearly 40 of us and many of us quite regularly like I can definitely see 20 ish regulars here right so uh, many of us quite regularly give up this time on the first Friday of every month to be together and to to understand to take a moment for ourselves I think is the important thing certainly from my point of view I can only speak from my experience but in in this tends to be solo industry where we spend a lot of time working on our own to put the importance on coming together and reflecting on how we're doing um in this yeah in this industry that is 
can be quite exposing, right? Standing in front of a group of new people every day or sometimes more than once a day, um, all week. So just kind of understanding what it means to to connect. And I think that's my, probably my most important element of the community, community pod, of the SOF community, is that connection element, but so much more besides. And I've actually got a little bit here that I've, I've pre-written and I've gone, oh, this is all the reasons why it's important to me. <laughs> but I kind of feel like that would be that would be like me taking the turn first. And I don't feel like I have that right. I feel like it's our conversation to have and to share what it is for each of us and all the different ways it's of, of value. So I might uh, come back to some of my list, my pre thought out list of different ways why it's of value to me. But I want to start first with an invitation for you. Um, if you want to come off mute, if you want to put it in chat, I would love to hear from you, from your perspective. What is this community to you and what do you get by being in this community? You know, what does it do for you? Morning. <laughs> um, well, this is only my second pod, um, but I've had some conversations with Kirsty before Christmas uh, regarding other things. And I, and I kind of told her that this has become my non-negotiable. This is my this is my time, like you say, to take five minutes to, or an hour <laughs> to stop and think and communicate with like minded people. And even, you know, to me, the, the, the best part of it is, is that pause at the beginning to be able to just stop. Don't do anything for like that, that 60 seconds, 90 seconds. And then it kind of makes you in this moment. So you kind of get more out of it. I'm waffling now, but yeah, if that's, that's kind of my thing. It's, it's just, it's being able to connect with, with other like-minded people in a calm, collected way. Brilliant. Thank you, Kimberly. And Claire's saying on the text, people with similar professional interests, expertise, and a dusting inspiration, all with a touch of, oh, it's gone all with a touch of kindness and a smile. Oh, yeah, that is, that is Richard says, that's a beautiful summary. Uh, Monica, thanks for joining. The, the question is, what is this community for you? What does it do for you? Why'd you come? Um, and I'm inviting people to come off mute and put their voice in the room or just to share in chat. We've got a couple of others sharing in chat, connection, reassurance, sharing ideas uh, and support from Claire, thank you Claire. And John says a sense of belonging and a feeling that we matter to each other. Yeah, that's lovely. It takes <laughs> me back to the beginning, right? When we started in the pandemic, I can't remember. I know Rita was there. I think Laura was in some early ones. Claire was there, Jason was there, yeah, some hands going up. So starting in the pandemic, that sense of that we mattered to each other was, was very important then and remains important now, which is great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, go Rita and then Mark. Um, I suppose you've mentioned I'm I joined this group during the pandemic. So now for me it's about connection, um, professional development, just really learning and being together. But in the pandemic, it was even more than that. It was a lifeline for me. I spent most of the time in the pandemic on my own uh, during those lockdowns. And for those of you who aren't familiar with School of Facilitation, Kirsty was running these sessions every Friday morning, and it was the highlight of my week. I mean, I can't even put into words what a difference these sessions made to my life. And I'll be hugely grateful to Kirsty forever. Uh, that community, reducing isolation, engagement, all of those wonderful things. Lovely. And just before I come to you, Monica, I will say, if it's your first time here, then feel free to use the the wider, as, as Rich kind of implied in his question, the wider implications of what community means to you in other ways and what community, what this community could mean to you. Monica. I, I, it's a bit difficult to do a follow-up to your one, Rita, because I think that was profoundly moving. And I think 
we've all we've all got a COVID story, and the fact that Kirsty and the community was there as your lifeline, um, I think that's that's gorgeous. I joined after the pandemic, and I was living in Spain at the time, and suffering from something someone in this community gave a name to, which was professional loneliness. And um, and I've used that expression a lot, and a lot of people say, yes, that's what I feel too. It's that sense of the work we do is all about other people. We're serving other people. We give of our souls and we're facilitators, which means we need to be listeners. And I think the community, I think it's just great that there's a space for people to speak and listen to each other um, to, to kind of, yeah, I think it's a professional loneliness that we all, we want to be with like-minded people. And I haven't been to many of these because I've been busy, but I thought 2024, it's the first Friday of the month, if it's still going, because I didn't even know if it was going. And I said, Kirsty, is it still happening? And it's taken me 10 frigging minutes to find the link. So I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, fantastic. I love all these answers. And also, I want to give us some space to go go a bit deeper in this conversation in terms of what it can mean to you. And to me, that means if we're going to kind of open up and share from a personal perspective what what this community means to you or what community means to you in general or what this community could mean to you, um, I always like to say your interpretation of the question is correct. So whatever your interpretation of the question, whatever makes that question meaningful for you, that's the right way to interpret it. Um, so I'm going to give you that question and a bit more time to go and sort of explore that and explain that story to a couple of others. We're going to go into breakout rooms. We're going to do threes and fours. Um, so a couple of people to chat to and to really explore this theme of community and what it means to you. Uh, and then we'll come back together and hear some some summaries if that works for everyone. So just adjusting. Our breakout rooms are ready to go. I will see you in 10. Bye. So our community uh, getting together at the community of nomads. I love that. Yeah, that is good. Well done. Um, so our community coming together to talk about what we value as community. Anyone else with, with what came out of that breakout room for you? Is there anything we haven't? yet heard is there any kind of difference or standout element that is kind of hiding or lurking in there the, it's the list being being heard so it's kind of all part of, of what kind of people have been saying but it's feeling that you've been heard being listened to mm. and being able to listen to other people um and like you say with 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 no expectations no just listening and understanding their you know areas that they're having problems with or their areas that they're really enjoying or it could be anything um and supporting them or having those conversations and you know increasing people's curiosity and like you like you were saying is, is pushing people to that edge and trying something different and go, I never thought about it that way. So it's mm. just for me it's 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 just having so many great heads in the room that you can just feed off and feel listened in. Yeah. So I think just looking back at my notes from before when I was writing about it, there's a nice theme of understanding each other and like being in the same situation of being like sometimes just too busy and like understanding what it means to be too busy in our line of work and too much travel and too many sessions and too many clients and just almost to the point of complete overwhelm with how much we have to do but also too quiet sometimes and what it means to be too quiet and how we manage that as facilitators and how we manage ourselves and and use that gift of space that can come in our line of work to to nourish ourselves and to to look after ourselves i also noted the um I've sometimes felt a real deep sense of community in, in sharing the, the feeling of shame around self-promotion and kind of needing to kind of unburden myself and recognize how stupid that is and how I just need to get out of my own way and um, put my voice out there and, um, yeah, getting a bit of backing for that. Um, I think it's and... also as well... Uh, um... 
having that kind of somebody going, you know, if you don't want to book up your whole diary, it's okay. Don't do it. You know, because you think that, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm employed at a company, but I understand if you're running your own business, you go, I've got to get booking, got to get booking, got to be busy, got to be busy, got to be here, there and everywhere. Actually, it's, it's somebody else going to you, it's okay to stop. It's okay to book every Friday afternoon so you don't have anything to do. That's okay too. Um, and it's because you, if you're working on your own nomads as we are, it's it's the voice in your head is telling you something different, but other people can go, no, it's okay. It's okay, just calm down and stop and or congratulate, congratulate yourself, pat yourself on the back. It's okay to go, I did that, yes. So I think, yeah, I think it, sometimes you do need that person outside going, yeah, it's all right, it's okay. Mm. Nice. And I love that point in chat from from Kane, like community brings us together, but it also has the potential to other other people. And that's that's an amazing insight to, for us to think about as we as we grow this community. And one of the reasons why I always love that this gathering on the first Friday of every month is open and free. Um, and before I kind of continue on that theme, I noticed Claire. I noticed your hand go up and down. Did you wanna? Did you wanna say anything? Yeah, no, I was just, I was just gonna say. Um, for me, I get I always love going into breakout room. I don't know who I'm gonna meet. Um, so I love the randomness of it because there's some glue that puts us all together because we all work in sort of roughly the same industry. But then I go into a breakout room and I meet some really lovely people who I would never have met otherwise, and we exchange stories. And I always come away with a new idea or a new thought. So I just love the randomness and the, and my own curiosity and um, the insights I just get from those moments. So that that's what I love about it. So thank you. And can I build on that, Claire? Because yeah. Hello. I remember you and I were in a breakout room and then we were like so excited and we're like let's continue and we managed to get time so we did you know like you always do an after party which you've inspired me with because that's what we now do with all our sessions after parties we actually also had the kind of the elongated breakout which was fabulous we yeah. love yeah yeah that's great it's lovely yeah absolutely and we and will be it's, about, it's about curiosity right being curious about each other and then just coming in that with with the, the the purity of mind and purity of heart in that curiosity, and then thinking, hmm, not sure if I pull this thread, if it's going to take me anywhere or take the other person anywhere, and just be fine with that because we are. I often finish my kind of elongated breakouts or whatever pickups with, okay, so what do we do? Okay, nothing. It was nice. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. And the purity of mind and purity of heart. What a brilliant, brilliant line. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this on, Claire. You're gonna be excited because we're gonna do another breakout room. <laughs> this is, um this I sort of feel like slightly undercover here. It's one of the things about community is thinking about the history of, of school of facilitation as well, right? Um and many of us have been on this journey with school of facilitation. A couple of years ago we had the SOF collective which was a, a membership community where we could sign up and we could get different levels and different things that would help us in our businesses we had um sofa sessions like um uh action coaching sessions for each other where we'd give each other questions and issues in our business and hear questions from others we had master classes we had accountability groups we had wisdom keepers where people with amazing backgrounds would come and give us a session. We had all these different types of things, but that kind of finished, that ended. And I think Kirsty is really interested in how else she can support this community. What else would we like as a community in order to have more opportunities to grow together, to thrive together, to support each other and to be supported by the School of Facilitation? So I, I wondered if we could do it just a little brainstorm in, in small groups over what you'd like. What else would you like above and beyond these monthly free kind of open to all sessions? What would you like that you would value in your life that you would invest in um, that School of Facilitation could offer? And we're just going to leave that as kind of a, an open brainstorm for the community. And I'm going to collect all the answers. I must say, Kirsty sent her love. 
first he says hi um and she's really interested to hear what other ideas we've got of how school of facilitation could support you to support each other so that's the question for the breakout room ideas what you would support what you would invest in um no bad ideas and then we'll come back together in i'm gonna go i'm gonna go less than 10 minutes because i want longer afterwards so i'm gonna go like trios in about seven minutes so it'll be nice and quick um and if anyone wants to capture ideas to share them in chat that would be lovely but otherwise is that question clear is it you know what you're doing great breakout rooms are open Hey Kimberly, first one back. Uh, and thank you to seconds are always the most dynamic. <laughs> it's like at the start, everyone's like, eh, anyone can sort of no, you go, no, you go. No, tell me about your trip to Portugal last week. Yeah. And then the end, it's like, and then another thing is this, and another thing is this. Um, brilliant. Love yeah, it. we'll leave it to the last minutes before we start the conversation. <laughs> Let's keep that last minute energy then. Let's fill up the chat box. Come off mute. Tell me what ideas came out. What was what was valuable? What was huge for you in that breakout room, please? This is going to sound really counterintuitive here, Phil, but in a way, it's almost like there isn't really a very clear answer because in COVID it was so crystal clear what the what the pod was for. It was everybody needed to feel they were not alone. And it was almost like a mission and a purpose behind it. But now we're post COVID and we still need that stuff because we, mm. we still have got some of us professional loneliness. And yet that's not as compelling a purpose or an intention. So we left without an answer, I'm afraid. It's good, it's good. That is an answer. One thing that we discussed, and it's not necessarily an answer in terms of what we'd like, but one thing we all agreed upon is it's very rare that, you know, when you, there's lots of organizations like this that kind of create communities and you join them and you're encouraged to bring other people to them. But effectively, they feel like a vehicle to sell you stuff. You know, it's like an opportunity to get people together and hawk them things. And we all said that despite the fact that Kirsty is running the business, you know, she's got kind of a, a roof to keep over her head and, and food to put on the table. You never feel like that with the School of Facilitators, you know. You get, she'll share, we've got these courses coming up and you'll get the newsletter. But this genuinely feels like like quite an altruistic pursuit, you know. And I think, like, to me, that's why I said there wasn't really anything more that I felt I wanted because I felt that what we'd already been given seems incredibly generous, you know. I'll take that opportunity to pop in the chat there's a gathering on the friday the 22nd of march in london um and also the podcast if you haven't been listening to the podcast uh there's a podcast to jump on board with as well um thank you kimberly more regional meetups specific workshops covering areas such as market marketing engagement a day in the life of i i um i ended up talking about club in our breakout room um we were talking about Kirsty came up with this concept of club as a way of understanding our own businesses, um, looking after our clients, looking after the learners, looking after ourselves, you, um, and looking after our business. And if we're looking after those four pillars, then we're we're doing okay in our world. And I'm always like, Kirsty, there's there's more value in in club. We can do specific sessions on on clients, how to get more clients, how to manage clients on learners how to get the best out of your learners how to give your learners the best and looking after yourself is obviously a topic we're all invested in and more on the business side of things as well I think we could I certainly after 12 years in business I certainly don't feel like I've got the hang of running my business um four accountants in 12 years about time to get a new one I think <laughs> all right um so what else from you what else from you came out as ideas for what we could do next 
Thank you, Lizzie, for putting that in chat. And for me, it's Jason here once yeah. again. Um, I'm always looking to be a better for trainer. I'm always looking to different ideas about improving what I do. Uh, like I don't know it all. So it's really good just to see it from a different perspective. I watch and go to courses all the time because I want to learn and grow myself. Mm. I take ideas from other people when they're facilitating. Going, oh, I like that. I like that. But I always just like other ways of doing it. So that's for me anyway, just because I want to master my craft. Nice. Yeah, I love that as well. And I I love the idea. I think Kane, you were you were talking about um in the breakout room different industries that we're all from. And I love how transferable these skills are, right? I think that there are there are ways and techniques used in kind of uh drama and creative side of our industry that could be totally transferable to charities, could be totally transferable to leadership, could be totally transferable to to corporate world and all the other worlds that we we exist in with just small small little tweaks and i think that would yeah that would help us all going back to your point jason to up our own game phil i was gonna suggest that even uh humor is probably one of the biggest things that we can do to engage with people and That's i think a human a humor course like uh uh i don't know uh, if we can be a stand-up comedian or something like that just to know how to engage because i always take jokes out of myself to engage with people but you know something like that if we can get an expert that can give us some mm. ideas around that i think that's that'd be uh incredible i know somebody that does that yeah. <laughs> i'll put you in touch jason <laughs> Yeah. I think you're onto something. The whole screen lit up as you said it. There were thumbs going up. There were smiles on the screen. This is not self-promotion, but I wrote a book with kids who've recovered from cancer into adulthood. And the title of the book originally was My Brain from Broken to Beautiful. And one of the kids said, what is it with adults? It's all so fucking... Sorry, excuse my French. So serious. And they said, change it. It needs to be more lighthearted. And it's now tumor me. Because, because these 20 something year olds said, we just want to bring back playfulness. Why do we need to lose it as we grow up? So I think you've tapped into an innate need in all of us is that you can't feel professional loneliness when you've got fun and playfulness. So I think you've hit on, hit on the idea there. Tumor me, fantastic, Monica. Tumor me. I love it. <laughs> nice. And Laura, did you do your improv course with Ruth? Did you do the same one? Yeah, so you went to, to London for like, tell us about that one. Um, but yeah, so we did a couple together and I think they were both about three months long and it was terrifying. Um, <laughs> just sort of basically, it sounds obvious, but getting on a stage with another person with about three words to start building a scene from. And uh, either you kind of gelled and got each other or you didn't. And it was like excruciating. And you realise then when you look at comedians working together, how some just stick together because they absolutely bring the best out of each other. Right. And others, it just sort of goes. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that as co-facilitators as well. Right. It sometimes yeah. works brilliantly and other times it's harder. But I think the, the principles are so similar. That's what I wanted to share is that it's things like whatever anyone says is OK. You mm -hmm. don't get into disagreement. You build on suggestions. You're not there to make anyone look less capable. You're there to build everybody up, that everyone's input is equal. Those mm -hmm. principles, like you have a structure and then you really play within it, are just, they, they're facilitation techniques, right? So yeah. massive overlap, I thought. But I enjoyed it. It was terrifying, but I enjoyed it. One of the funniest, naughtiest and cheekiest co-facilitators I've ever worked with is sitting here. Sally, what are you, you going to say about humour in workshops? <laughs> Oh, so naughty to co-facilitate with. I this is I'm sitting in the background. It's just music to my ears that people want to be naughty as facilitators because the amount of times that I, like everyone else in this room, is in a professional environment where we think actually they don't have a sense of humour, and you know we're not allowed to. And I've been fortunate enough to work with a few people on this call where. We have got the world is bloody tough at the moment. If we can't have a laugh with people and bring some fun and feel vulnerable about it, then why are we here? It's too hard otherwise, right? Love it. 
Love but it. I think I just want to build on that one again, Phil, because we were just in the most fun breakout. And I think really next time we meet, Tom needs to go on stage and tell <laughs> tell it all what happened. Because yeah. Mm. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um but stay for the after party. <laughs> it is 10 o'clock. We will be having an after party. Feel free to stay. Um, as always, um, your energy, your enthusiasm. Your attendance, just being here, sharing in this community is what makes it. So thank you so much for attending. We'll see you next month, first Friday of the month, for the next School of Facilitation Community Pod. Mm -hmm.